Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Reducing Pain and Encouraging Healing, Polymem Wound Dressing. This webinar is part of the Wound Source Wound Care Product Navigator Series. The Wound Care Product Navigator Series is an easy-to-access, interactive learning lab for healthcare professionals to get the latest information they need on the wound care products available to them. Each webinar segment will take a deep dive into a specific product technology. Our sponsor for this installment is Ferris Manufacturing. My name is Emmy McCauley from Wound Source, and I will be the moderator for this event. This program will provide an in-depth look into polymem wound dressings, which can be used to manage wound exudate as well as reduce wound pain. This presentation will be followed by a question and answer session, so we encourage you to submit your questions to us throughout the program. As a reminder, the content of today's webinar is for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it intended to be a substitute for manufacturer instructions. Always refer to your facility protocol in the assessment and treatment of patients. The views and opinions expressed in this program are solely those of the presenters and do not represent the views of Wound Source, Kestrel Health Information, Inc., its affiliates, or subsidiary companies. Now I want to take a moment and provide you with an overview of your webinar console. At the bottom of your console are application tools that you can use during the webinar. To submit a question to our guest speakers, please select the Q&A app icon on your screen and type your question in the field provided and select Submit. We will try to get to all of your questions during the question and answer period. You can expand your slide area by clicking on the Maximize icon on the top right of the slide area or by dragging the bottom right corner of the slide area. If you have any technical difficulty during the program, please click on the Help icon, which is the app with the question mark. This covers the most common technical issues. To access information about today's guest speakers, you may select and expand the Bio app found on the left-hand side of your console. Our sponsor has included additional information on today's product. On the right of your console, you'll find a list of resources available for download. You may also access this information by selecting the document icon in the bottom tray of your console. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available on demand. If you have any other requests or questions pertaining to this program, please contact our sponsor using the Contact Us app located in the tray of your console, which is the application with the email icon. Before I introduce today's guests, please take a moment to complete our quick poll, which should display on your screen here momentarily, to help us find out how many have joined us for today's session. The question is, how many people, in addition to yourself, are watching the webinar with you today? If you are attending this webinar by yourself, simply enter a zero. If you are in an in-service setting, an estimate is fine, and we thank you for your response. At this point, I want to welcome our featured speakers, John Newton and Myron Troshuk. John has been in wound care for seven years and has experience with surgical site and chronic wounds. Myron has 25 years experience with sales and marketing teams in the advanced wound care dressings and wound device markets. John and Myron, thank you so much for joining us today. Myron's going to get us started. Thank you for introducing us. Uh, I'm Myron Troshuk. What if you, we can introduce you to a dressing formulation today that controls inflammation and reduces persistent and procedural wound pain? And what if that same dressing formulation could increase healing and be applied virtually to all wound types in all care settings? And that same formulation will reduce your total cost of care, simplify your wound care process, and improve your patient experience. I'm sure you'd like to learn more. Polymem dressings are ideal for open wounds and closed tissue injuries. As we get started, we want to introduce you to Ferris Manufacturing. Ferris is the company that makes Polymem. Uh, Polymem is a highly recognized brand. We have a 30-year history in advanced wound care. We're a physician-led company focused on provider outcomes and cost control. We're U.S.-based. We manufacture everything in Fort Worth, Texas. We have a zero back order history with zero product recalls. We meet small business requirements set by the federal government, and we're an FDA registered medical device manufacturer. 
The polymem difference, and what really makes polymem different is the patented formulation of components within polymem that work synergistically to provide unmatched benefits that clinicians will experience and so will their patients. Unlike typical foam, whose primary purpose is to absorb, polymem dressings are designed to facilitate healing, relieve pain, and control inflammation. Each polymem dressing includes a hydrophilic polyurethane matrix, and within this matrix, there's a mild tissue-friendly wound cleanser, a soothing moisturizer, a superabsorbent, and a se semi-permeable film backing is combined in the primary and secondary configurations. In the primary only configuration, there is no film backing in those dressings. The evidence behind Polymem and the Polymem products uh, is compelling. And this outlines the evidence that's available on Polymem based on the Joanna Briggs Institute uh, evidence levels of 2013. We've got 24 level one studies that have been performed, 28 level two studies, nine level three studies, over 200 case study series. These have been done by 264 independent unsponsored authors, in all representing nearly 5,000 patients. Ferris continues to study the impact of the polymer formulation and, and the evidence continues to mount on its effectiveness. I want to tell you just a little bit about how some of the understandings have come about with polymem. Polymem was originally designed to be used on children who had burns. The goal was to have a dressing that wouldn't stick to the child, something that would uh, be easy to, to remove, that would uh, not require cleaning the wound bed during dressing changes because the dressing was providing that cleansing continuously. After the product was launched, Clinicians started mentioning to the company that the, pa that the wound that the patient's persistent wound pain was decreasing, and they were wondering why. The company really hadn't designed the product for that purpose. This was something that was uh, something that had to be investigated. And what you'll see uh, is that on the image uh, to the right, there was a, a woman at the office who fell off a ladder. She had an abrasion. She put a polymem on without compression. Two days later, she's got a big, ugly bruise, just like what you'd expect. And uh, watch what she sees when she removed her dressing. She saw there was no bruise underneath. This started the company on a long series of, of experiments and research to try and understand what was going on. And uh, as they continued to do more, they started to understand more. Pretty amazing. Oh, did you notice that there's no abrasion there? In two days, the abrasion was gone. Pretty exciting. This work led through a very variety of studies, and one of the studies that I think is very important for us to talk about is done by Dr. Bites out of the University of Minnesota. He demonstrated definitively that polymem actually controls inflammation. What he demonstrated is that polymem doesn't just control inflammation in the dermis and the epidermis, but even when applied to the skin, it controls inflammation in the muscle, in the deep muscle beneath. So what we're looking at in these slides are histology slides. So on the right-hand side of each of the images, you see something that says 100 micrometers, so that's one segment. So that one segment is basically the width of uh, two hairs. The large purple structures are, excuse me, the large pink structures are muscle cells. The purple, little purple dots are inflama inflammatory cells. And so um, the incisions were made like across there and across here and across there. And so what we're looking at is how much inflammatory cells spread from the primary site of the injury into the surrounding tissue. And what we can see is that in, for the inflammatory cells, in the first one where there's incision without anything placed on top of the skin, you can see how widely it spread. And then there's no difference between that and the ones that had gauze covering. 
whereas in the one with where polymer was placed on the skin, all the inflammatory cells are all concentrated right at the primary site of the injury, reducing secondary injury. And by reducing secondary injury, your bystander damage reduces the risk of infection and delayed healing, as well as reducing the amount of pain and bruising that is uh, suffered. Doctors White and Davies did an audit of the evidence that was available at the time, and they went and looked at all the evidence, and what they discovered is that polymem, or what I'm looking at is the scale on the graph on the left, is they described what the typical experience is, which is the blue line, and you can see that the background pain is high, and the pink line, which is polymem, the background pain is lower, but in addition, the pain associated with dressing changes is much higher and much more pronounced the typical experience as opposed to the polymem because there's very little need for cleansing. All you do is remove the dressing, throw it away. Patients aren't in a lot of background pain, so they don't have as much apprehension for dressing changes. Well, let's translate into that real life experience. So this little girl on the right, she'd had a very severe burn from grabbing hot melt glue out of a glue gun. And she went to the emergency room they treated her, uh, they gave her silver sulfadiazine and had the parents changing the dressings twice a day, three times a day, and she was in excruciating pain. Polymem arrived on this particular day, seven hours later. The patient wounds look much, much better on the right-hand image. And not only that, but the child is now essentially pain-free. She's able to move her hand normally. She's able to uh, play normally. She's not screaming when the parents go to change the dressing. Had a huge impact on the patient's life and the family's life. So we covered how polymem controls inflammation and reduces both persistent and procedural pain. But polymem also increases healing. Um, and because it's a versatile dressing, it's specifically engineered to reduce the patient's total wound experience while actively encouraging a healing environment for that wound. Polymem is indicated for a wide range of wounds, everything from abrasions and acute wounds to diabetic ulcers, full and partial thickness wounds, infected wounds, uh, skin tears, surgical wounds, deep tissue injury, venous ulcers. You can use the polymem formulation on all of these wounds that are listed here. The way polymem works is it's activated by wound fluid, and we've touched on the components of polymem uh, earlier, and John will, in a few minutes, give some further detail on how each component works. The way polymem works synergistically is when the matrix is laid over the wound and begins absorbing wound fluid, the cleanser and the glycerol are released into the wound bed. And as they're released into the wound bed, the superabsorbents begin to pull the drainage or exudate into the dressing and lock that in while the matrix itself fills and contours the wound bed. And the thin film backing on the polymem provides the right moisture vapor exchange rate to optimize moisture and promote moist wound healing. As Myron was saying, that, and we talked about, touched on before, that polymem constantly cleanses and debris the wound. The tissue-friendly wound cleanser is activated by the moisture released into the wound bed. That continuous cleansing minimizes the need for painful debridement or additional rinsing at dressing changes. And it rapidly debrides uh, the necrotic tissue without the use of debriding agents through advanced autolytic debridement. Here's an example of an Alzheimer's patient. You can see on the right how uh, the problems that, that this patient has with the stage four heel ulcer. Now in this particular case, the clinician did not do any surgical debridement, didn't do anything other than use polymem for all the debridements and all the management. All they did is put polymem silver wick cavity filler in and then just change the dressing. They didn't remove the callus. The callus was then used by the body to help uh, manage that wound. So you can see how beautiful it looked on May 14th and then it went on to close on July 
17. So this is a four month old non healing ulcer that once it was managed with polymem, it was closed rather than being maintained in a chronic state. Polymem moistens the wound as we've talked about. The glycerol helps establish and maintain a moist wound healing environment. Tracks moisture to the surface and reduce the risk of the dressing sticking to the wound bed along with the surfactant and the actual membrane itself. They all contribute. Glycerol also provides an immediate energy source to the tissues in the open wound. The synergistic action of all the components allows the polymem to be applied to wounds that typically you might not consider using a foam-like dressing on, including exposed bone, tendons, and nerves. Here's an example of polymem max and a regular dressing being applied to a tendon. You can see just in five days how beautiful that uh, the tendons look and as well how nicely the uh, granulating tissue looks. You can see now on July 4th that um, the wound is really in very, very good shape and uh, tendons are almost completely closed. Polymum also fills the cavities because of the way it conforms, like Marlon was talking about. For a shallow wound, our standard dressings of uh, standard polymum dressing can fill a cavity of about a half a centimeter. Otherwise, we have dressings that are thicker that can fill deeper, as well as ones that are specifically designed for cavities, tunnels, and undermined areas. Here's an example of a dressing and how it conforms and forms a, basically fills the, the wound in a three-dimensional manner. You can see how, how it's locked to exudate in and how it conforms to the wound bed. An example of our cavity filler being used in a dehist wound. The patient had uh, a dehist wound. She was told to change the dressing twice a day, wet to dry. She was supposed to do it herself when she was discharged from the hospital. Pain was excruciating. Started using polymem, wick cavity filler. Her pain essentially disappeared during dressing changes. She was able to eventually reduce the number of dressing changes to two to three times per week rather than two times a day and the polymum provided continuous cleansing of the wound bed. Dramatically improved her quality of life. The wound closed without infection or complications. Polymum absorbs. It selectively wicks the watery portion of the exudate, concentrating growth factors and nutrients in the wound bed while maintaining that moist wound bed. These absorbing properties draw non-viable tissues into the dressing where it's discarded along with the dressing. Many clinicians will look at the dressing itself when they remove it just, just to see how much debris has been grabbed into it. And it wicks vertically so it reduces the risk of periwound maceration. Here is polymem on a donor site. You can see how beautiful the donor site looks. And they did that with two dressing changes. In the first dressing change you can see what the dressing looks like when it's about ready to be changed. You can see it's you can see the amount of exudate that's been drawn in. It's a good indication of when, when to change it. And the epithelial, epithelialization was rapid and uh, it was pain-free. Uh, the patient was in great shape. And the, several almost over a thousand patients were done at this facility using this technique and it reduced their infection rates and uh, re reduce the need for pain medications as well. The semi-permeable film membrane on our uh, combined primary secondary dressings allows excess exudate to evaporate, helps to regulate the moisture and temperature at the wound surface, and it's a barrier to contamination. And then polymem also provides some cushioning of the wound bed to minimize further trauma. When using polymem, it's an indicator dressing, so generally what we recommend is that the clinicians draw the approximate margin on the top of the dressing so that when exudate is drawn into the dressing, you'll start seeing it appearing in the center of, the, of, of that circle. And then as the exudate is drawn in and reaches that approximate margin that you've drawn on it, that's when you change the dressing. Now, when you're applying polymem, in this case, you've got a deep cavity, so you put a cavity filler in, but you wanna also cover the peri wound that is swollen, tender, itchy, inflamed. And so you can see where we've written polymem on the outside. You want the polymem to go over all of those areas so that 
you're going to be managing that inflammation by con reducing the inflammation in the peri-wound area, which then helps to improve the, per the perfusion of the wound itself. And again, polymem is not working just in the skin, but in the deep tissue as well. So you're helping three-dimensionally deep. The key benefits for any clinical practitioner to transition to polymem includes you can reduce the total cost of treatment because you're using fewer supplies. Uh, you're simplifying the wound care process and makes it easier, uh, whether it's for clinical staff or patients at home, and you're improving the overall patient experience. As we've demonstrated, the polymem formulation allows you to use polymem across a wide range of wounds with various conditions that occur in the wound. However, what we learned from feedback from clinicians is that in some cases it really benefits having a specialized dressing for particular indications. So we have gone ahead and introduced various specialty dressings using the same formulation that we introduced you to earlier. One of the first dressings we introduced uh, for a specialty application is our tube site dressing. Polymem tube dressing is fenestrated so it easily fits around the tube, whether it be for trach or G-tube applications. It's easy on the patient and it's easy for, easy for the clinician to apply. Polymem doesn't leave any debris behind and that's a big benefit, especially with trach patients. Um, and this is available in two sizes. We also introduced the silicone border dressing, which is uniquely engineered to stay in place better and more securely than any other silicone dressing that's available. Polymem protects the peri wound as a dressing itself. The face of the dressing does not have silicone across it. The silicone is only on the border. So the patient is benefiting from polymem's contact with, the, with that tissue. Uh, so it minimizes trauma because it doesn't stick to a wound. By design, because the edges are rounded and we can use such thin edges in the design, uh, we minimize the risk of roll-up. And it's available in a standard and an antimicrobial silver configuration. We also introduced the line of surgical dressings, and these were designed to meet the need of dressings for surgical incisions. So something that's easy to put on in the OR, easy to teach caregivers at home how to apply, something that's water resistant can be left on for longer periods in time in place up to from three to five days as long as seven. Uh, configurations that come in our traditional polymem as well as in our silver. Um, and most importantly, we designed some of these for specific procedures. There's a C-section dressing, a total knee replacement, total hip, arthroscopic and laparoscopic procedures, uh, as well as other incision types. We introduced the finger toe dressing specifically designed for fingers and toes for an anatomical fit. We have five different sizes. It's a primary and secondary dressing in one. Uh, it's also available in our silver. When you use polymem, and what we introduce to you today with polymem is the polymem formulation. And whether you're using polymem as a primary and secondary in one, or a secondary version of polymem covered with polymem, uh, primary, secondary, it all comes down to how do you want to attach it. Most clinicians find the most affordable way to use polymem is window pane taping. But there's other needs. You may want a cloth adhesive that's uh, breathable. You may need a water-resistant acrylic adhesive, a silicone adhesive, different sizes, different thicknesses that absorb more, uh, an antimicrobial version or a rope version. So it really comes down to what's your specific need. But the poly polymer formulation is identical across the line. Thank you for participating in our webinar today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Uh, you can reach us at info at polymem.com or 800 polymem.
Thank you for that presentation, John and Myron. We are now opening up the floor to questions about PolyMem. To submit a question to us, please use the Q&A application and type in your question, then select Submit. We'll try to get through as many questions as we can during the next five minutes. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, John and Myron, when PolyMem is being applied, are there any skin prep procedures that will help assure best results? Um, yes. For optimum results, we encourage that you clean the lotions, any lotions that might be on the skin where the PolyMem pad or the border adhesive is going to be applied. As discussed earlier, the best outcome is achieved when PolyMem is in direct contact with the open portions of the wound as well as the surrounding skin. Lotions or contents of wipes that often will contain lotions can interfere with achieving the optimum results. Optim uh, alcohol pads have been effective in removing the lotions and the moisturizing agents that might be in wipes so that you can have good contact between the skin and the PolyMem pad as well as the skin and any adhesive borders. Thank you. Is PolyMem suitable for moderate to heavy exudating wounds? And does the outer surface of PolyMem allow the drainage to come through to a secondary absorptive dressing? Yes, there are PolyMem configurations which are appropriate to use on all levels of exudation and from any stage of injury through closure. Second part of the question, um, PolyMem is available in a number of configurations. PolyMem cavity filler allows the exudate to migrate through the dressing to a secondary absorptive PolyMem dressing, such as a PolyMem Max. Only PolyMem formulation dressings have been shown to control inflammation in the skin and the deep tissue through contact with the skin. Other absorptive dressing approaches have not been shown to present that benefit. So when you're selecting an absorptive dressing, the optimum is to utilize PolyMem in the cavity as well as PolyMem configuration in the peri over, over that dressing and then onto the peri wound. Great. And how can clinicians purchase your products? Uh, PolyMem is available through uh, all medical supply distributors that serve the acute and post-acute markets. Uh, these would include organizations like Cardinal, Medline, Owens & Minor, McKesson, Concordance, Twin Med, Mercy, Supreme Medical, and many others that serve the healthcare community. Great. And why don't I need to clean the or cleanse the wound when I use PolyMem? Well, what we recommend is if a organization's protocol uh, dictates wound cleansing, all clinicians should hear, adhere to it. However, what clinicians have found using PolyMem is the built-in wound cleanser, along with the glycerin and the super absorbents working synergistically, this establish, establishes a, a wound cleansing system that can eliminate the need for cleansing. And this cleansing system or process truly is minimizing the manual contact uh, with that wound bed and this reduces the pain associated with wound cleansing. Further, when there's non-viable tissue uh, in, present in the wound, that wound cleansing system will liquefy and break down that tissue and will be absorbed with the drainage into the superabsorbent part of the dressing, and it locks it in the dressing, leaving the growth factors behind. This leads to less pain and higher patient and clinician satisfaction as well as a need for fewer supplies. Great, thank you. Uh, John and Myron, as we conclude this session, do you have any final thoughts for the audience today? Sure, uh, I'd like to first thank everybody for participating uh, today and taking the time to, to attend our program. Um, all of us at Ferris hope you found today's webinar beneficial and that you learn more about the functioning capabilities of polymem. Uh, polymem is the dressing that controls inflammation, reduces pain, and increases healing. And if you want to try polymem or learn more about polymem, uh, you can go ahead and, and request samples or information by calling 800-POLYMEM, or you can email us at info at polymem.com. 
When you use PolyMM, always be sure to review the instructions for use before applying any PolyMM dressing so you can understand exactly how to apply it. Thanks for your time this afternoon, and we look forward to you trying PolyMM. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today's webinar. For those of you with additional questions about today's webinar, you may contact Ferris Manufacturing directly by submitting an email using the Contact Us application found in the bottom tray of your console. You may also indicate your interest in learning more about polymem wound dressings by participating in our brief exit survey. As a reminder, we have included a link to additional topic resources available under the resource document icon. Please be sure to review these resources at your convenience. This webinar has been recorded and will be made available in full on-demand. Please look for our follow-up email that will alert you to the on-demand status so that you can review any material you missed or simply go over everything again. You will be redirected momentarily to the brief survey I mentioned. We appreci appreciate your participation in this questionnaire as you leave the program. I would like to extend a warm thank you to Ferris Manufacturing for sponsoring today's webinar. On behalf of today's guests, as well as things at Wound Source and Ferris Manufacturing, thank you for joining us and for taking the time to view this webinar. My name is Emmy McCauley from Wound Source. Have a wonderful day.